If you just summon a lad, you have five negates. What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm bringing you guys another deck profile. This is a deck that I saw online a couple weeks ago and I've kind of fallen in love with. It's kind of like a combo deck but also a stun deck. It's uh, mid-range honestly is what I would like to call it and mid-range decks are kind of my favorite style of decks and they utilize one of my favorite cards of all time, Light and Darkness Dragon. This card I think is absolutely insane. I think it's a very underrated card. It's pretty much Appalosa but better and this deck can just turbo out Light and Darkness Dragon like it's nothing and that's why I think this deck is really cool and it makes use of my favorite engine of the format right now which is is Horus. I've done a lot of Horus content on the channel just because I feel like there's so much versatility with it and I'm really excited to be showing you guys this build. So uh, yeah, with that being said, let's get right into the deck profile. We are starting off, of course, with three Light and Darkness Dragon. This is your main guy of the deck. Now, if you're able to set this up, you're uh, pretty much winning the duel. Now, I want to say something with this card. It is one of those cards where it'll kind of prevent you from activating your own stuff because it'll chain to, I believe, any activation or any effect. So for that reason, if you are like, let's say, chaining your own card, this will attempt to negate it. But if you have this on board, it's pretty much live for, I think, five uh, negates. It's 2800, so at least for the first two or three negates, you're not going to be worried about your opponent just attacking over it. And on top of that, if your opponent does end up outing this, that's when you can use some of your other disruptions. So that's the really cool thing about this card is you can just hold him on the board until your opponent outs it. And then once your opponent outs it, then they got to deal with all the other things that you got going on, which is really nice. So three, Light and Darkness Dragon. Then of course, we're playing the Horus package, which just randomly synergizes so well with this. So three, Imseti, one Drama Turf, one Happy, and one of uh, this guy over here. The reason we're playing these guys is for, well, actually multiple reasons. One, this is again, a stun mid-range deck. So when you're able to set these kind of guys up in the graveyard, what you're able to do is you're able to, on turn three, summon them back out and OTK. Also, these provide you as tribute fodder for your Light and Darkness Dragon, because they'll just summon themselves, you tribute for this, you pretty much have an apple on your side of the board, right? So that's why uh, this just works so well this way. And then on top of that, they're all level eights, which is really nice, because you guys are gonna see why it synergizes with cards in the extra deck, synergizes with cards in the main deck as well. And then for the rest of the package here, we are playing three King Sarcophagus, of course, consistency. We're also playing two Walls of the Imperial Tomb, as well as one Mausoleum of the Emperor. Now, this card is absolutely insane. It pretty much is just a field spell that gets you to Light and Darkness Dragon without having to tribute summon. You pay 2,000 life points, then you don't have to tribute two for this, so you can just normal summon this, essentially, so that's really nice. And this deck doesn't really have a normal summon, so that's why this card works really well with Light and Darkness Dragon. And there's actually a way to get to these field spells. Walls of the Imperial Tomb, as well, is also just really powerful, because it counts as King Sark. It also shuffles back dead cards into your deck, which is really nice. But the ways to get into these are the Crystal Beast package. So we're playing one of the Zenith or Ra Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon and one Bridge of Salvation. The really cool thing about these cards is if you have this in hand, you can always dump it with like, let's say an Inseti. You send this from hand to the graveyard and then uh, what you'd be able to do is fill, search out a field spell with this. Now, let's say you draw this and let's say you have access to the walls. Essentially, you can use the walls, search a horse card, put this back into your deck. So it's never really dead. Like this engine is never really dead, which is absolutely insane. And that's why I really like this for the field spell engine. And of course, we're also playing one terraforming for the field spells as well. So that's kind of it for the engine, right? But then I also want to include two more cards, the Medora as well as the Keldo. I know saying these cards is absolutely insane if it's not tier format, right? But these cards are actually really, really good. They're disruptions on your opponent's turn, which is really nice because they're shufflers. And they're really good cards that you guys can pitch with the Horus stuff, right? If you're pitching with these, you can pitch these guys, get them in the graveyard, and they act as another form of disruption for you. So I really like the Keldo. I really like the Mudora as well. And so I'm going to count them as part of engine, right? So this is the entire engine. You guys can see it's a lot of different things, but it's a lot of things that synergize really well with each other. So yeah, that's it for engine. Um, I also want to say that this deck is actually 44 cards. It's not 40 on the dot. I really tried to keep it at 40 on the dot, but I had to go to 44. I feel like there are so many really good things. And this deck is so consistent that playing more than 40 made sense. And then there are a couple bricks. Again, the Bridge of Salvation and stuff and the, the Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon. While they're not bricks and you can technically play around them, I'd rather just not play around them, right? So that's why I'm at 44. But moving on to the non-engine. Uh, we're playing three, trade in. Of course, you saw all our monsters here are level eight, so trade in works really, really well with that. Once you use your Rainbow Bridge and you have your Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon in hand, that's a level eight that you can just use with trade in now. So that's really, really nice. And then, um, there's a lot of stun cards. Again, like I said, this is Horus Stun. This is kind of like a mid range deck. So we're playing three Solemn Judgment, three Skill Drain, one there can only be one. These are really important because, uh, one, it's, uh, you know, this is how the deck works. It's a stun deck. And again, it's a beatdown deck as well. So skill drain works really, really well. But there can only be one works really well as well because if you're looking at your cards here, you have a wing beast, a beast warrior, a beast, a spellcaster, and a dragon. 
So there can only be one is absolutely insane in this deck because you'll never actually have to worry about playing into it. And it does hurt a lot of decks right now in the format, right? So that's why I think there can only be one is absolutely insane. Even though it's just a one of right now because of the ban list, this card you have to be playing. And then the last two traps we're also playing actually are Canopic, uh, Canopic Protector, is that how you say it? This card is really good as well. Just summons back course monsters on your opponent's turn, which is really nice. It's a really cool trap card that helps you kind of set up your boards again, which is really nice. So I really like playing this card. And uh, yeah, again, a lot of stun stuff here. This arguably could be Solemn Strike over Solemn Judgment. I think Solemn Strike is really good in today's format as well. But I think Judgment just makes a lot more sense. So you're going first, you're gonna set up your board. If you have a uh, Lad and Solemn Judgment, you're pretty much winning any game, right? So that's why I really like the Judgment. And then we're also playing uh, three Lava Golem. Now this deck, as you can imagine, as a stun deck is not the greatest at going second. While it can go second because the Horus cards are still really good going second, uh, Lava Golem just helps you clear any boards that you don't wanna deal with. And then on top of that, if you really need it, let's say you're going first and you draw this in hand, it's a trading target. So that's, that's really just what it is, right? And then we're playing the one called by three talents, three Imperm and two Desires. This is for, you know, just, we're not playing any hand traps, right? Because again, you wanna go first, you're kind of playing a control version of the deck. This counts as a hand trap, but it's kind of also like a board breaker. This is a board breaker for you as well. And another reason why we're playing 44 is because we're playing Desires. Uh, this deck, I don't think you want to be playing Prosperity or anything in it. And because you're playing Desires, playing more than 40 actually just makes a lot of sense. So you're not necessarily banishing all of your important cards. So 44 in the main deck, uh, I think it's 44. It might be 42, it might be 44. I can't remember the exact number, but I'm pretty sure it's 44. And uh, you guys can see how well it synergizes all together, which is really nice. Now, I want to show you guys the extra deck. First of all, you have your rank eight stuff. So you're not your number 100, number 90. You have your Hope Harbinger, Dingirsu, you know, these are all the really cool negates right now that you guys can be playing. Like these two specifically are negates. This is a send, this is an OTK package for you. So if you already had problems with OTKing, this is gonna do it for you. One of the new Fire King rank eight, this guy's pretty cool, is a board wipe, kind of nice in that sense. One Santa Fond, one Giant Trainer, and then one Zeus. Again, just all the rank eight stuff that you guys can be playing. And I think it just solves everything, right? If you wanna put up negates, you have negates. If you wanna put up OTK boards, you have that, right? So it just kind of solves everything that this deck wants to do, essentially. Uh, you're playing with one IP, one SP, one Nightmare Unicorn. Dark, Axis Code, and Underworld Goddess. Now, Underworld Goddess is really good because the Horus monsters can swarm the field. So if you're able to swarm the field, it kind of outs any monster uh, that your opponent has that you may not be able to out. But if you guys look at this extra deck, it's just utility. It's just the best cards that this deck can make, the best cards this deck has access to. And uh, the really cool thing about this deck is, I know the Horus cards are a little bit pricey, but in terms of the extra deck, other than SP, nothing's really that expensive. So if you don't have access to SP, that's fine. You guys can play something else here instead. But that's it for the extra deck. And then I want to show you, here's where the real spice comes in, the side deck. Secret Village. Okay, so remember how I told you there was a field spell package? Okay, well, Imseti is a spellcaster, right? And if you're able sometimes to just set up, even if you don't set up Light and Darkness Dragon, if you're able to just set up this board, like you're locking your opponents out of spell cards. Now imagine you're locking them out of spell cards and then you put up Photon Lord as a rank eight, which is a monster negate. So now you have monster negate and no spell cards, which is kind of insane, right? So I really like Secret Village in the side deck. I don't main it because I think Mausoleum is just a little bit better for the Light and Darkness Dragon. But uh, yeah, Secret Village, absolutely insane card. Now keep in mind with the rest of the uh, side deck, it's always gonna be up to personal preference. It's really up to what you guys wanna play. But uh, three Bell, three Ash. I'm not maining the Ash because, uh, I'm not maining actually a lot of hand traps in general because again, this is kind of a stun variant, but the hand traps are really good. Ash is also really good into the branded matchups going second. Two Pankratops. I think Pankratops is really good in today's format as well. Just being able to pop cards, he uh, provides another body for you, which is really nice going second. And then uh, one Harpies two Cosmic Cyclone, and three Evenly Matched. So this is more so for back row and combo decks. The reason most of our side deck outside of this is for going second is because going first, the deck already has so many like powerful cards that you're never really worried about siding in for going first. You have the Solemns, you have the There Can Only Be One, you have the Skill Drain, you have the Light and Earthness Dragon. So going first, you never have a problem. It's going second where this deck kind of struggles, and that's why you're siding so heavily for going second, and then it pretty much covers every matchup. And then going first, this is really good if you do see matchups where they're really reliant on their spell cards. So that's pretty much it for the deck but Profile. I know it's something that uh, I hope I explained it well. I hope I explained why these cards synergize so well. And there are so many little small engines that I think work so well with the Horus package, the Crystal Beast Rainbow uh, Dragon package. You have the Mudora and the Keldo, which are the shufflers, which are really nice because those are also disruptions, right? So on top of being able to use them for Imseti fodder and whatnot, you're also setting up disruption with those cards as well. And then again, like I said, Light and Darkness Dragon, this card is absolutely insane. It's an, it's an apple who saw on crack. If you guys don't know what this card exactly does, I'll just explain it real quick. It's an apple, but it also negates spells and it negates traps as well. You just have to, uh, I think the cost is just 500 attack points and it's at 2,800, which means you can use it five times. You literally, if you just summon a lad, you have five negates. 
Like, <laughs> how crazy is that card? It's absolutely insane. So that's why I wanted to show off this deck. And again, Horus continues to be one of my favorite engines in the game. Super fun to play, super versatile. There's so many more builds, and you guys are probably gonna see more Horus content on the channel here as well. Now, if you guys did enjoy, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this one. We upload seven days a week here on the channel. You guys get five shorts, and then at least two of these kind of videos, whether it's a combo video or a deck profile or product opening, you guys are gonna get that here as well. Thank you, Alpha, for being the best cameraman on YouTube. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, thank you guys. Peace.